Hey everyone, welcome back to Small Batch Devs. My name is Austin. And I'm Elliot. Today we're going to be talking about Firebase Cloud Functions, and we're going to be implementing an example one in our blog application. And as you may have guessed, this is another video in our Building a Blog Application with Angular series. So Austin, what are Firebase Cloud Functions? So Firebase Cloud Functions are the ability to write our backend code in Firebase. So we can store our, our backend code on Google servers, and then it can respond to different types of events in our application. Yeah, there are many triggers that you can use to get your functions running. So there's triggers like whenever you read or write to Cloud Firestore, the real-time database, there's Firebase authentication triggers, so like when a new user signs up. Uh, there's also HTTP callable triggers that you can call from your client side. And there's several other types that you can use to implement Firebase Cloud Functions. So Austin, why would we use Firebase Cloud Functions? So one reason we would use them is they're much more private and secure um, as opposed to running the JavaScript or TypeScript in your client ensures that people can't time tamper with the JavaScript or the TypeScript that you're writing and send malicious data to your backend. Yeah, they're also good for running third-party APIs that can't run on client-side JavaScript, things like mail services or any other third-party API. Just note that to use third-party services in your cloud functions, your Firebase account will need to be on the Blaze plan and that does require a credit card. Right, and also Firebase Cloud Functions will automatically scale up or down depending on the payload that your server is receiving. That's pretty sweet. It's not bad, it's not bad. So let's give a quick overview of what we're going to be coding today. Sure, so the first thing we're gonna do is use the Firebase CLI to generate all the function boilerplate. After that, then we're gonna be actually deploying our demo cloud functions to Firebase. Yeah, and stick around for the end because we're going to show you a better way to organize your folder structure using TypeScript imports. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do here is go ahead and initialize our Firebase functions using the CLI. So we will go ahead and type Firebase init functions, and we'll let that resolve. Um, yes, we obviously want to proceed. We're going to choose TypeScript, or we do want to install the dependencies with NPM right now. Boom! Now that that's done, you will notice that we have a functions folder here at the root of our project. The CLI created that for us. Awesome. Cool. Very fun. The other part of the generated boilerplate is if you scroll down and open up your firebase.json file, you'll notice that the Firebase CLI also added this functions pre-deploy configuration. And what this is going to do is anytime you run Firebase deploy functions, which we'll do in a little bit, uh, this file tells the CLI to run these steps first. And this is just going to compile the TypeScript functions that we're about to write down into JavaScript before it deploys those to uh, Google servers. So now if we head over to one of the files that the CLI generated for us, the index.ts uh, file, you can see here that uh, the CLI actually generates an example Firebase functions function for us. Before we deploy this function, we're just going to paste in a secondary function just to show you two different types of triggers. Uh, the first one you can see here is an HTTP request trigger. So anytime we make a call to a specific HTTP URL, this trigger will light up and execute this function. And the second one is anytime we write a document to this Firestore path, uh, this trigger will execute and the function will just console log the data that we've uh, pushed to that Firestore location. So now we're actually going to deploy our function to Firebase. Um, in order to do that, we're going to use the CLI. Um, so we're going to use Firebase deploy dash dash only, oops, dash dash only functions. And you actually can add a colon and then type the name of like the um, function that you want to deploy if you only want to deploy one, 
but we're just going to deploy them all here. So we'll run that and we'll be deploying our functions to Firebase. Nice. 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 Very nice. Look at it go. Look at it go, Dave. So now that our Firebase functions have deployed successfully, let's go ahead and demo them a little bit. We're here in our Firebase console. And if we head to the functions page, we will now be able to see that we have two Firebase functions in here. The first one being our hello world, which is right here in our IDE. And the second being on Firestore, right, which is right here. What we can do now is copy this URL and actually go uh, navigate to it in our browser. And as you can see Boom. here, we get our hello from Firebase, which we sent right here. Uh, Sweet. And the second one, we need to actually create a document in this path. So example collection and then a document ID. U U ID. Um, so we'll create a collection in our database right now. Example collection. And if we hit next, we'll create a document. We can just auto generate an ID, say name, uh, small batch devs. And now when we save it, so now we can navigate back to our Firestore and view the logs here. So you can see here in the logs of our on Firestore write function, we have the event.data, and it actually prints out what we added to this document, exactly what our console.log um, is actually outputting. Both our Fire, Firebase functions work now. Um, nice. Nice, that's very nice. So the next step, we're actually gonna show you how to better structure your folders in the functions directory of your project. And the reason you want to do this is because after some time of creating cloud functions, you know, you could have 10, 20, however many functions in this one index file, and it gets kind of messy. So uh, we're going to show you how to better structure that so it keeps it nice and clean. So if you uh, create two folders, just because we have two functions in this case, uh, we're going to create one for HTTP functions, and we're going to create a second folder for Firestore functions. Uh, but in reality, you would want to group these based on functionality rather than their trigger type. Uh, and then so we're going to go ahead and cut this Firestore function. And we're going to create a new index file inside the Firestore folder. And we're just going to go ahead and paste our code in there. Uh, do make sure you have this export you're exporting this function from this file because we will be importing it in our original index file. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and cut this hello world and put it in our HTTP folder. Just like that. And in the main index, we can get rid of all of this. We've just imported these from our other files and we're just exporting them again from this index file so that when we deploy our functions, all of our uh, imported functions get written into the same file during the compilation process. So this just helps you keep a more organized folder structure uh, for your cloud functions. Uh, one thing I do wanna note here is this admin uh, requirement. And I do wanna mention that it does have to be the first thing in this file, initializes your admin permissions, and then all your other functions inherit those permissions. So you can do different admin stuff like uh, reading and writing to Firestore or the cloud storage, for example. So the last thing we wanted to mention is how to view your logs from the CLI. We viewed them in the actual Firebase uh, web app, but it might be a little easier depending on your situation to just view them using uh, the CLI. So if you type Firebase functions, colon log, and as you can see here, the event.data, which we viewed earlier, just using the Firebase console web app. In this episode, we covered Firebase Cloud Functions. Uh, we went over how to initialize them in your existing project. We also showed you two different trigger types and how to test them and look at the logs. And lastly, we showed you an improved folder structure for a cleaner functions directory. 
So thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell to see more awesome content. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace. Peace. I can't tell if you lagged or if you're just holding it there. I think he lagged. No, no, I can see him. <laughs> I can see you moving. Oh, the micro, like, <laughs> wobbling. Can we let this train pass first? It's so loud. I can't hear it. Can you really not? Uh, it actually just passed. Okay. Okay, I'm going to restart this recording. What? I'm going to restart this recording. Start it.